Okay guys, welcome back to Revamp. And welcome back to, uh, I guess it's another installment of The Last of the Iron Lion. Uh, if you haven't seen the couple of videos that I'd done before on it, uh, I'll put it up in the corner, a couple of videos on um, adjusting the valve train. Uh, you know, it's not specifically for a Holden V8, but, you know, uh, can be used on other cars as well. But as you can see, I'm surrounded by, I won't call it the remains of the engine, but the components of the engine, I guess you could say. Uh, some of them are good, some of them are not. But just a bit of backstory on it. Uh, at the time of me doing all the valve train, it did have a rear main seal leak and the, the car didn't run because someone had over-adjusted the valves uh, and it was hanging valves open. So I got the car running. The owner took the engine out, redid the rear main seal and consequently ended up with a sump leak. So I got the car back, did the sump gasket. At that time, found that the oil uh, had metal in it. Now, I'm not talking about just a couple of little bits of metal or a slight metal sheen in the oil. I'm talking about flat out metal flake paint came out of this sump. Yeah, I'm talking a session with low rider painting school. Like, um, yeah, th this thing had some metal. And at the time, it was kind of tossed up in the air. Do we pull the engine and strip it down or do we just put it back together, fresh oil, and the owner crossed his fingers and, you know, see what happens. So I was decided just put the sump back on, fresh oil, took it home. It basically sat for the next couple of months. Uh, might have started a couple of times, but that's about it. A couple of months later, he's decided, let's pull it out, strip it down, and find out where this metal is really coming from. Because pulling some bearing caps and stuff, we couldn't actually see where this significant amount of metal had come from. So we put strip it down and that's where we're at now. So what I'll do, we'll start off, I'll show you pulling the engine down where I sort of point out a few of the um, uh, like bad things, I suppose, that I found. And we do actually find the reason for the metal. And then afterwards, I'll just sort of go through and explain a few of the things that I found wrong and why I think they've happened. So let's get into that video and then we'll come back and have a look at those components. This particular engine teardown guys is very much of the diagnostic type, really looking to find any little issues along the way. Taking valve covers off, you can see it's got crane gold rockers. Then under the intake, we can see crow tie bar roller lifters and one pair of morel lifters. Obviously this pair has been changed at some point. Taking each pair of rockers off, checking for damage to push rod tips and anything else that we can see that looks just not quite right in the valve operation as we go through the cylinders. We're checking each cylinder as we go, as we pull it apart. Really, yeah, just to make sure we don't miss anything. As we did with the rockers and push rods, the lifters are also checked, also finding damage as we did with the push rods. Removing the heads, they weren't torqued like you would expect head studs to be. And once we pulled them off, we revealed flat top pistons and barely squashed Felpro head gaskets. Just as a note, see the lift valley that's been cleaned up with a deburring tool. A rough check of deck height, revealing a positive deck height, 
So this thing really had some compression going on. I've mentioned this before, but when diagnosing an engine issue, particularly internal, do not turn the engine upside down before removing the sump. I'll put a link in the corner where I better explain the reasons why in the teardown of the HQ Chev engine. You can see here it's fitted with H-beam connecting rods along with the stroke and crankshaft. Uh, we've also got a roller timing chain set on the front. And now you can see we found a bit of a major issue with the engine. You can see that the camshaft and timing gear moves backwards and forwards quite a fair bit. And you can see that we found the retainer plate for the camshaft has a significant amount of wear signifying that the cam was actually pushing against it for some reason. Possibly something to do with the timing chain, but I uh, yet to clarify exactly the reason as to why this has happened. Lastly, removing pistons and rods. Then the crankshaft for a completely torn down Holden 355 stroker engine all right guys so we've got the engine apart i thought like i was saying i'll just show you some of the parts that we've had a bit of an issue with uh ranging from previous issues with the con rods push rods lifters camshaft we actually even did find where the metal's coming from if you didn't notice it in the video um but I thought I'd show a bit of a close-up look at these things because, you know, in like a time lapse type video, you don't get that close of a look at things. So let's have a closer look at the things that, well, the major things we found wrong. Uh, obviously, things like crankshaft, cylinder heads, engine block, all that's got to be checked anyway. Probably lineage the crankshaft. Um, I did find out that the rotating assembly wasn't balanced when a crankshaft was changed. So might do things like that as well. So, you know, let's have a quick look at these things. And yeah, I'll show you what's gone wrong. All right, well, starting out with, we'll just start out with these con rods, get them out of the way. You can see that there's different coloration on these two con rods. Uh, this one's black. You can even see when you pull the bearings out, it's a darker color inside. Now, this engine at one stage, you can see it's very dark inside. This engine at one stage did have a big end bearing let go, and that's the reason for the crankshaft being changed. Uh, personally, when a big end lets go and a conrod heats up so much that it changes color, um, I like to get all the con rods close and honed to make sure that the opening for the bearings is round and all the same size. So that's our issue with the con rods. Not a huge one, but you know, it's something we need to get checked. So I'll put them aside. Push rods. Now, I don't know if it comes up on the camera very well. I'll try and get it in there. But you can see the tip of a lot of those push rods is no longer round. You can see this end's a lot better and mostly round. That end, you can see mostly the middle two are badly damaged. Now, apparently these push rods were like that when they were in the engine on the previous rebuild uh, when the crankshaft was changed obviously we can't put that in we're going to you know source some new push rods and everything and we might be changing uh, the camshaft and lifters so we may end up with different length push rods so that's an issue you know that can cause damage to rockers lifters you know bits of these are actually chrome molly, 
that could be bits of chrome only floating around in the engine in the oil cause all sorts of untold damage to bearings now when we come to lifters i haven't pulled them apart but i'll tell you why in a minute why it would be of interest to pull them apart um it actually had one set or one pair of roller lifters changed um at a previous engine rebuild um they are morel ones but i believe crow make um gets morel to make their lifters but if we have a look here we can see some nasty chipping around the bottom skirt of the lifter uh, i think it's this one This one here, I'm not sure if you can see it, just at my fingernail tip, there is a little chip and we can actually see a crack running up the lifter here. That's most likely caused by side load on the lifter roller tip. Uh, that's it. You'll see why that's important in a second. Needless to say, uh, the engine will need a set of lifters. Now, I don't know if these are hydraulic or um, solid yet. Now, the reason that's important is our billet steel roller cam, also from Crow, we have now found out is a solid roller. Got in the vicinity of 650 lift and somewhere around uh, advertised duration around about 315 or ish degrees. Um, so it's quite a substantial roller cam for a Holden engine anyway. Uh, I know people are putting bigger ones in, but yeah. So if you can see it there, compared to that load there, that one's nice and smooth. That one's all crusty or crispy or worn away. What's happened there is the case hardening's worn off the, lift, uh, the camshaft load. So... We do know that not long after buying the car, our mate um, crapped the lifter and obviously they've decided, let's just um, go and put it in with the damaged lobe. Now, you know, it's a steel roller, so it's probably not gonna wear out hugely fast, but solid rollers do have very high spring pressure in the cylinder heads and that will just continually put tiny bits of metal into the engine as well as damaging the roll tip of the lifter. So comes down to what we have found that's put the metal in the oil. And what we've actually found is the retainer plate for the camshaft has significant wear on it. Now that goes in here like this and what's been happening something has been forcing the camshaft backwards and it's been that gear and the camshaft itself have been grinding at this plate and wearing that material away um we've yet to really discover why i've spoken to a few people and um They've said it's not really a common thing that they've seen very often or at all. So, yeah, you can see that's a significant amount of metal and pretty good reason why we would have uh, very silver oil at one stage. All right, guys, so there's a bit of a look at the inside of uh, the engine out of the last the iron line. Uh, as you can see, it's got some issues. Uh, we did find why we had uh, this uh metal flake oil before um and we also found a lot of other issues uh which is going to necessitate quite a few more parts than what we thought so the engine block the crankshaft you know the conrods all that's got to be machine all machine shop the block's going to be tested uh pressure tested maybe sonic tested I'm not sure um but yeah all that stuff costs money 
And unfortunately, at the moment, all that stuff takes a long time. So this won't happen straight away. But if you want to see a video of us putting it back together, uh, the kind of parts we put back in it, uh, let us know in the comments. If you've got a theory on why the camshaft was pushing backwards and taking out the retainer plate, um, let us know in the comments as well. But other than that, give us a like, subscribe to the channel, look us up on Facebook, and I'll catch you up next time on Next Gen Revamp.